I'm gonna give you guys stuff that I typically don't even unveil to people unless they're involved with some really internal coaching. And, and a lot of this stuff usually costs them about $20,000 for me to sit down and explain this. And I don't even let this stuff out. How many people in here right now feel intimidated by show of hands? How many people in here right now feel intimidated by purchasing real estate in such a great market? Anybody? We got beat up in the recession. And I'll tell you guys, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I was, a, I, I thought that I was a real estate guru. I thought that I was getting wealthy in real estate prior to the recession because Jerome Maldonado was the king of the mountain and I was just a badass in real estate, right? And I really thought that. I just thought, I, I really, there was, I was walking around in my Converse and, my, and in, my, in my chucks and, and in t-shirts and going, going to the office like that and just thinking, go, showing up on my motorcycles and stuff and I was like, yeah, man, I'm retired, baby. I got this all figured out and I'm, I got this thing systemized. And then all of a sudden, guess what happened? The carpet got swept out from underneath me. Watch, big picture, big picture right here. Okay, you buy a property, it's cash flowing. You're making small margins, okay? You have, you have a modest amount coming in. You take a property like a multifamily apartment complex. You take a retail center, which really you may, may usually, typically in a good market function on about 85 to 95% occupancy. Now, people are scared. When people are scared, they withdraw. You can't do nothing. If someone's broke, what are you gonna go after them for, right? If you're dealing with mom and pop shops, you're dealing with people that are, that are homeowners renting apartments, they don't have nothing for you to chase them for. The attorney's fees are, are cost, will cost you more than, than chasing them. And so understand that all of a sudden you go from an 85% occupancy down to like 75%, that 10% margin. What happens to your margins right there? They're gone, they close on you, okay? They close on you. I was the guy trying to pick stuff up with 10% down, 90% loan to value, you know, 80, 80 percent loan to value. I was doing real estate contracts. I had stuff leveraged in different places. I've always been pretty conservative, but I was trying to build. I came from nothing. I was trying to build a portfolio from nothing, right? And I was getting aggressive with it because I felt comfortable because Jerome was the king of real estate, right? Yeah. I was the king of real estate. I was like, I'm, I'm kicking ass. I'm building this. I'm the contractor. I'm everything. I'm going to kill this thing. And then all of a sudden, it got pulled out from under us. Started getting phone calls from them. Bank of Oklahoma starts fighting with me. They go, Jerome, we need an appraisal on the property. I had a fund, 300,000 of that. And I'll tell you that when we got into December of 2008, it was a temperature taker. I don't think we had made less than $100,000 a month in probably 15 years at that time. And we went to $10,000 in one month gross sales for our, all our companies. That was our gross sales in one month. What does the Federal Reserve do? They print money, right? Okay. Look, there are no, the, our, our original constitution says that no one's supposed to print money except for our federal government. Well, the central banking system and the big, the big guys got in, in line with all of the, uh, with all, with government, and they said, we're going to create a private sector for the banks, right? Sent into it with the central banking system, we're going to go out and we're going to print money. And then we're going to loan it to the government at a, at a small interest rate of two, two and a half percent. Guess how those in, that interest gets paid? Guess who pays that interest on the, on the money that's printed? Taxes. taxes. Isn't it ironic that income taxes were implemented in, 19, in the same year in 1913? The banks have the largest holdings of real estate in the, in the, in the country. So what ends up happening is this. They land up going out, there's an economic crisis. What is, happens when, during an economic crisis when, when, the, when, when money's tight? They print more of it, right, to get it back in the market. And so what ends up happening is they get that money back in the market to do what? Stimulate the economy, right? Okay? So when they do that, guess what, guess what they're able to do? They're able to loan out 10 times that. So if they, if they go out and print $3 trillion in revenue, I mean in money, in paper money, they can go out and, and land $30 trillion in revenue. And so what happens to the dollar when that happens? It goes down in value. Here's why real estate is cool, because guess what happens when you buy an asset? Let's say you bought a house for $100,000. The value of the dollar just dropped, so what, what, what $100,000 was when it dropped, what happens to that house? How much is that house worth now? It's worth more money. So if that $100,000 is now, it costs us to buy the same house, is now worth $130,000 because of how money deflated in value. So the same house that you bought for $100,000 now might be worth $130,000, $140,000. Why is real estate cool? Is because you can buy an asset 
And it's one of the only things in the world you can buy that'll hold solid in value because they're not printing gold. How many people are walking around here with a, with a gold nugget in their purse and go, or, their, or their wallet and say, oh yeah, here, I want to pay for a pizza. Boom, you drop a gold nugget down. They said that's the only true currency, right? I'm here to tell you guys that one of the only true currencies in this world is real estate. 